tonight to this open forum on the clean energy bill. Energy job. We're also going to be talking about clean energy jobs. We're going to be talking about cap and invest. We're going to be talking about cap and trade. Because if you've been following things, you know they're all the same thing, right? And the name keeps changing. Uh, tonight's program is organized by the Citizens Climate Lobby. I want to thank them very much for that. A couple of other administrative details. Um, if, uh, if you um, need to know, the, uh, the restrooms are out the door and down the very end of the hall on the right. We have cookies and coffee, and we hope that there's very little of that left when we finish up tonight. And I want to introduce some other folks that are in the room as I look around. I see uh, County Commissioner Terry Thompson is with us here tonight. Um, <laughs> Mayor Billy Joe Smith is with us from Toledo. There's Billy Joe way in the back. <laughs> Mayor Susan Winter from Walport, thank you for joining us. Here in Newport, Mark and uh, David. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Mark. Oh, I am so sorry. Yeah. And, and I've got another city council member over here, absolutely. Um, and I'm just trying to think, um, we've got folks that are with us from, uh, from the Lincoln City Chamber of Commerce. Thanks for driving up. And Katie Jacobson is here, who is a final candidate for County Commissioner of Katie in the Senate as well. And I am your moderator this evening. I'm David Gombert, State Representative. So we came out tonight. Oh, I lost right over there, didn't I? <laughs> we came out tonight to talk about some proposed legislation that's going to be considered when the legislature convenes on Monday. And we came out to talk about, uh, about carbon and how it impacts um, our communities, our, uh, our plans for the future, the effects on our kids and our grandkids, our businesses, and, uh, and the future of the Oregon coast that we love so very much. And why is carbon important? Well, you know, certainly we are seeing the effects. We're seeing the effects of um, climate change, ocean warming, acidification, uh, hypoxia, and the impact that that has on so many of our long-standing, traditional, established industries here on the coast, like shellfish, like salmon, like crabs, or on forestry and farming, or indirectly on tourism. Um, we received a report in the legislative uh, interim that business in Southern Oregon affected by the fires was down 60% during the four season. 60% loss of business during the height of the season, which of course translates into a roughly 40% impact on the annual business on the southern Oregon coast. Is that picking up all right? It, I think it has to start being more up there. Up here, yeah. I'll watch this. So we have those kinds of impacts that we're concerned about. You know, at the same time, we're, uh, we're concerned about some of the other impacts on established businesses that have been here a long time as well, and how carbon-based legislation may affect our day-to-day -day costs or local jobs um, or, or local industry. So we're going to talk about those kinds of things here tonight. And you're going to get the opportunity to ask as many questions as you want. We have circulated cards so that you can write your questions down and we'll pre present them then to our panel of experts. And our panel of experts really are experts. I'm going to introduce them very briefly and we're going to hear from them in just a couple of minutes. But we have Zach Klonoski with us tonight who is the Finance Director of Renew Oregon. And he has, uh, before working for Renew Oregon, actually uh, worked as the sustainability and climate advisor for Portland Mayor Charlie Hales. Welcome to the coast, Zach. We have with us Brian Edling, who is a seasonal park ranger at Crater Lake National Park for the last 25 years and has been a volunteer for the Citizens Climate Lobby for the past six years. So, Brian, welcome up, uh, up north here to the Central Coast. And we also have with us uh, Representative Ken Helm from District 34 in Beaverton. And Ken is the chair of the uh, Renewable Energy Committee of the House and the author of one of two pieces of, uh, of clean jobs legislation that's going to be considered in the legislature next week. And I'm going to turn this over to them in just a minute, but I wanted to give just a little bit of political context, if I may. Political context. Here in Oregon, we meet in what we call the long legislative session every other year. 
And then in alternate years, we meet for what we call the short legislative session. And people say, what's the difference between the long and the short legislative session? Well, one's longer than the other one is, of course. But let me put it in this kind of context for you. In the long legislative session, Ken and I can write as many bills as we want. And uh, in 2017, there were about 2,500 pieces of proposed legislation that were introduced, and about 750 of them passed. 750 bills. In the short legislative session, House members are limited to just two pieces of legislation, and senators have cut back on that a little bit further and said they're only going to introduce one bill each. So instead of 2,500 different proposals, we've got about 150 different proposals that are going to be acted on in the coming five weeks. And for any of them to prevail, they really have to be scheduled for a hearing in the first week, be voted out of committee immediately, go off to the floor of the first chamber, like for example, the House of Representatives, to be voted on in the second week, so they can go over to the Senate in the third week for a hearing and a work session, and then go to the floor of the Senate in the fourth week, so that they can actually make it through the entire process in just a four or five week period, which means that legislation needs to be moving very, very quick, uh, quickly and efficiently, and in most cases have some momentum behind it. That's the context that we are talking about, and right now there are two pieces of legislation, one in the House and one in the Senate, dealing with the subject that we came to discuss tonight. So I'm gonna to turn to Zach first of all, because Zach, I think you brought a PowerPoint presentation that's gonna provide a little bit more context so uh, do, you, uh, do you want to set this up for us uh, verbally, or do you just want to turn it on? What's your pleasure? 